Good evening, everybody. Welcome to midweek. So glad to see each and every one of you tonight. Excited about what God is going to do. I hope you have had a great week this week. I know Pastor and Sister Heather and family have had an incredible week with their toes in the sand. And I'm thankful that they got to get away. And uh, they will be back with us for Mother's Day. Everybody say Mother's Day. Don't forget to call your don't forget to call her, tell her happy Mother's Day. My mom will be watching this tomorrow. So I'm gonna do it two times and tell her happy Mother's Day now. And then I'm gonna call her again on Sunday because I won't be able to see her. And then we'll do something special for her on that day. But I'm I'm thankful to be with you all. Be with be with my church family tonight. God is going to do something great. Somebody say worth the fight. It's worth the fight. That's what we're going to talk about tonight for just a little while. If you have a need in the house tonight, we would love to join with you and pray with you with that. If you are sick in body or you just need prayer over a situation, we would always love to to join with you in prayer. Bible says where two or three are gathered, the Lord is there also, and I believe that with everything in me. So uh, I, I just ask that you would would uh, come to us, find someone, myself, my wife, uh, some leadership here. We would all love to pray with you. I do want to bring one name to you. Her name is Lauren, and she is in Hot Springs, or, uh, Arkadelphia, I'm sorry, and she is battling cancer. She's a teenage girl, and they found out that she has cancer in her body. But I, I'm thankful for doctors. I'm thankful for our medical team. I'm thankful for everything that they're doing in her life right now. And I believe that God can and will touch her life. I believe that God can. So can we tonight, before we go any further, can we lift up Lauren and her family in prayer right now? Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for your healing touch. God, we thank you for our medical teams that we have all around the world, and especially here in America, God. Lord, and we ask that your hands you would. Give Lauren's family peace. Lord, that you would be with them in this trying time. Lord, that you would be with her, God, that your hands would be wrapped around her and heal her body like only you can do, Lord Jesus. Lord, bless this word tonight. Lord, minister to me and through me tonight, Lord Jesus. We ask all of this in your perfect and holy name. Amen. Amen. It's worth the fight. I have quite a lengthy bit of scripture here, so I'm going to take off. And if you have your Bibles, if you don't, it will be on the screen for you. Or if you have an iPad, phone, whatever the case may be, um, you can use that tonight as well. But it reads like this, Numbers chapter 13 and verse 23 says, And they came unto the brook of Eshcol. And cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they buried it. Out of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. That's a lot of grapes. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel and to the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Anakites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites and all the ites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites would dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, 
for we are all able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The Lord, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that saw it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. I see a lot of things happening in this little bit of scripture. There's a ton of things that's, that, that we can see and that we can exegete from this, this little bit of scripture, but what I want to focus on is, is the negative. It's amazing how fast that you go from great big grapes and this great big report of land that flows with milk and honey. Brother, I, I, if I seen a land that flows with milk and honey, it's going to take a lot to stop me from getting there. If I seen a land that, that had a ton of, of cows and a, a ton of pigs, and I got to go out to Jonathan and Savannah's house, and my family and I, we, we got to go out and see all of these cows, and they had a couple of pigs, and I just thought about all the bacon and hamburgers that could come from that land. But I see in this little bit of scripture that there's a land that flows with milk and honey. There's a land that has great big fruit. There's a a land that has all of these things around it, but they want to focus on the giants. They want to focus on the ites, all the Anakites and Canaanites and all of these peoples and the great big walls that are around them, and they're forgetting that they serve a great big God that has already shown them that they can walk on dry land from a split sea that they are no longer bound by Egyptians, that they're, they're a set free people, but they're so conditioned to look at the negative. It's so hot out here and we still have to work. It's so nasty and all these people are so rude to me. I, 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 I don't want to do what I'm doing. They're conditioned to think about the negative. I don't know about you. I, I know a few people in my life that are very focused on negative things. Myself can be focused on negative things if I'm not careful. If I allow my, my mind to take me to the negative place and instead of the positive place, then I, I get into a little bit of trouble. I, I can at sometimes think about my job and how negative my job is. I can think about how bad I have it and think about all the, this, the craziness in my life and what, what was happening right then and there. But what I failed to remember is that God has actually blessed me with a job. What I failed to remember sometimes is that God has blessed me with good health. God has blessed me with things that I never thought I would ever have, but I'm human. I look at negative things. But I'm here to remind somebody tonight that whatever you're seeking, whatever you're, you've sought out to get, it's, it's worth the fight. It's worth the fight. There's walls that are built up in our life, and there's things that, that there's giants that we've built in our life. There's all types of things that we've built in our life. You read this passage of Scripture a little bit further, they started making all these different types of lower G gods. Because why? I want to look at the negative thing. Jesus didn't do it right when I wanted it, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build myself a God. I'm going to build myself something that I can worship, and maybe, just maybe, it'll be what I want it to be. But we have walls built up. We have neg- negative walls built up in our life. We have walls called depression, anxiety, and, and, and self-doubt, and all of these, these walls. But the Lord says, I, I want to tear down some walls tonight because you're worth fighting for. He proved to us 2,000 years ago that, that we're worth fighting for. They're, they're, the Roman armies and the Roman government tried to, to kill him and, and send him off, but you're worth fighting for. This passage this, that, that we have, I, I, I can't, some, at times it's hard for me to just grab it. Because I I can't go through an experience like a Red Sea situation and doubt God. But then I do. 
I have my own Red Sea situation in life, and I start doubting God. Some of us have had Red Sea situations in our life where God has performed miracles, and God has brought you out of some situations, and we forget about those, and my goodness, I'm going through it again. How am I ever going to get through this? How am I ever going to to get back to that place of, of positivity? Tear down the walls. Let them fall. Let them crumble. Let them, let them just get away from them because there is fruit and milk and honey that's waiting for you. There's things that are in a promised land that God has promised you. Think about the things that God has promised you. I remember going to camp, and we have camp coming up very soon, teams, and I'm super excited to go down to Redfield and spend some, some good weeks, if I can, in Redfield, Arkansas. But I can remember when I received the gift of the Holy Ghost at a camp down there, and I, I remember leaving that place and, and just feeling like I was on top of the world. Nothing, I could storm hell with a water gun and feel like I was doing good. But life happened. My dad died. Now I'm putting walls back up. Life happened. I'm back to selling drugs. Life happened. I'm back to drinking alcohol. Life happens, and I'm backslidden, and I don't remember that God had just given me something that he promised me over 2,000 years ago. But I'm worth the fight. You're worth the fight. You're worth the fight that, that Jesus said, I will never leave you alone. I will never leave you by yourself. You will always have a comfort in me. That is who I am for you. Giants. Let's talk about giants for a while. There's a giant, and I'm just going to speak very plainly tonight. I hope that's okay. But there's a giant in our world that, that we don't like to talk about, about mental health. There's a giant, in, in that, that specific giant that, that we have in our life to, today in very present. There was a young man that's very young, not too long ago, took his own life. Because he was so depressed, he was so ate up with this giant that he didn't know how to slay. This giant that he didn't know how to talk about. This this giant that he didn't know how to deal with. This giant that was in his mind. He didn't know how to deal with it. He didn't know who to talk to. He didn't know who who he could go to. But the the word of God says that I'm always here for you. But you can also seek help without condemnation. You can always go and get help while you pray. I heard a very good quote not too long ago, and it reads, if I can find it, here it is. You cannot love a thing without wanting to fight for it. I love each and every one of you, and I go to spiritual war for each and every one of you on a daily basis. But I can't help you if I'm not helping me first. If my mind is riddled with all sorts of things that I'm dealing with outside of these four walls, if my cup is empty, I can't help anybody. I can love you till I'm blue in the face. But spiritually, I can't help you. But if I can get to a place where I can talk about everything that I'm battling, talk about the things that I'm going through, talk about all of the situations that God has taken away from me, and at times I like to pick it back up and carry it with me. But if I can talk about those things, and I can love, get loved through it, then I can help love you through your situation. You can always come to me without any type of condemnation and thinking that, oh, Brother Marcus is going to say something off the wall. No, because you're worth fighting for. Everything that you're dealing with, it's, it's not too big for my God, because we're worth fighting for. Great warriors all through history have fought diligently for what they love, whether it's for family or for their land, or maybe they, have, they, they just have something worth fighting for. All, all the world wars that we fought, the Korean War, all of these wars, they have been fought for love. Do you love your neighbor enough to check on them when they're down? It's easy to send a text and say, hey, thinking about your love, you're praying for you. It's a little bit harder to pick up the phone and have that conversation. 
It's a little bit more difficult when somebody has just been riddled with depression and anxiety and they don't want to talk, but they don't know how to reach out either. Maybe we can do our part. Hey, I love you. If you ever need somebody to talk to, I'm here. If you ever need somebody to just vent to, I'm here. If you ever just want to pray about some things, I'm your God. I will pray with you. I will love you, and I will not condemn you for what you are going through. The Israelites have come to this brook of Eshcol, and they have found fruit, figs, and land that is flowing with milk and honey, a place that the Lord promised them, but they couldn't look past their situation. Who in here tonight is not looking or is looking past your situation? Your situation's right in front of you, but you can't see the milk and honey for the situation. Money's a big thing these days. Gas is a big thing these days. Four dollars in Oklahoma, and I'm there three days a week. Hundred dollars a tank, easy. But money is a big thing. We don't have enough of it, or maybe we do have enough of it, and we don't know what to do with it. But you're worth fighting for. Bankrupt or $1,000 in your account right now, you're worth fighting for. The Lord said, I will give you everything. I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you that you cannot contain. There's no stigma in there. There's no no type of, of situation there. I don't care what you look like, how much money you have. I just want to bless you because you're worth fighting for. Lord, don't let us miss a blessing by being, fo- by being focused on adversity instead of you. That was my prayer today. Is as I'm praying over this, this, this message, as I'm praying over this, this whole entire church, I was like, Lord, please don't let us focus on our adversity more than we focus on you. Because while I'm focused on my adversity, while everything's going to just going crazy, chaos is all around us, I might be the only one in the room where chaos is just going on all around me. And I don't know what to do sometimes. It, I find myself in tears because I get overwhelmed by the things that's happening in the world. But those people are worth fighting for. People in our city are worth fighting. Our kids are worth fighting for. I could spend the rest of the night just on that. Teaching our children things that we don't want our children to know at such a young age, but we're scared to teach them Bible verses. Teaching our kids all types of obscene things in schools these days, but don't bring your Bible to school. We have to protect our kids because they're worth fighting for. They are not the next generation. They are the current generation. And as I said last week and Sunday, it's, it's time to hand the torch. And if they're worth fighting for, they have to be worth fighting for in the spiritual and the physical. And I can't have one without, without the other. If I'm going to go to a school board meeting, I hope you pray and you see God's face if you've ever been to a school board meeting. Because they get a little sketchy. There's a lot of humans in that room. But they're worth fighting for. I seen in, in Colorado a couple of years ago that there was a, a first grade classroom that was being taught on gender neutrality, neutral, being gender neutral. And in the state of Colorado, that same school said that we can teach on this. And then a parent asked, well, can my student have a Bible study in school? No, not during school time, only during club times. And then we have to be in the room to make sure that it's, it's available to everybody. It's, it's, it can just be in a bubble. And that parent began to fight for her child. That parent began to, to call on the name of Jesus for her child. And I don't know whatever came of it, but I just, it just stood out to me even today that we, are got to, we have got to fight for our children. If there's no one else that's going to fight for kids, I'm going to fight for kids. If there's no one else that's going to stand in the gap for our kids, I'm going to stand in the gap for the kids. I'll be the one that says, I'm, I'm pump the brakes, halt everything. 
it stops here. They're worth fighting for. Your job is worth fighting for to an extent. The things that happen in our workplaces, the things that are said in our workplaces, how do you conduct yourself in your workplace? Are you winning souls? Are you bringing people back to to Jesus? Are you telling them all about the love of God in your schools? Are you telling people about the love of God? When I worked at Everett Buick GMC in Central Arkansas, I got to baptize two of my good friends now. They're really, really good friends. But at the time, they were just my employees, and they was like, dude, there's something weird about you. Can you tell us what it is? And I just began to tell them about Jesus. And as we would have conversations about Jesus in the wash bay at Everett Buick GMC, and people would bring in their cars, and we would go on drives to get gas for them. And a little bit of, we got a little crazy on the gas, but it's fine. Everybody's still alive. But I remember one night, it was 10 10 p.m., and we were getting ready to close everything down. They said, is your church open? I said, absolutely, I got a key. They said, can we go get baptized? And I told myself, this is what I've been fighting for. This is everything that I've been holding dear and holding close to me because they are worth fighting for. A little while later, after that, they were like, hey, come here, management. Come here, Marcus. Yes, sir. Pump the brakes on the baptism thing. People are getting weirded out. You're a preacher. (laughs) Thank you. A couple months later, another guy come up to me and said, what's this Jesus name stuff you're talking about? And I began again to tell them. And they said, okay, look, if they open the door, then go for it. We just don't want you starting the conversations. And I began to just have Bible study after Bible study after Bible study because I made sure to make sure in my mind that everybody in that dealership was worth fighting for. Everybody that I come in contact with, I don't care what you look like, what you smell like. I had a guest here. His name was Ryan this past Sunday. Great guy. And we went to Pink House Alchemy. It was a coffee place. Go figure. Holly wanted coffee. And he was outside on the porch. He was eating a bagel and he's like, do you play for the Razorbacks? No. This is dad bod. It's fine. It's like, well, what do you do? Are you a bodybuilder? No, I'm a student pastor. He's built off donuts and pizza. Where do you preach? I gave him the address to the church, and Sister Jennifer texted me. It was like 8 something, 8.30. She said, your, your friend's here. And I was like, dude, it is 8.30. He is an hour and a half early for church. This is awesome. And I get here, and he's already got a cup of coffee. He's got his gift bag, and he's like, Pastor Marcus, I'm here for church. Ryan's worth fighting for. He told me later that that morning when we got here, and he said, man, I'm sorry. I I, I didn't dress up. I I, I don't have all the the cool stuff that, oh, you guys look so good. He said, I'm living out of my car. He said, Ryan, can we pray? He said, don't feel sorry for me. Don't, don't feel sorry. He's a Jamaican guy. He said, don't feel sorry for me. I got a job. The Lord gave me a car. I made it to church. Let's pray that God gets me a house. Amen, Ryan. Lay hands on me. I need that faith. Because I automatically went to the negative. And he said, no, no, you... You're looking at this all wrong because what I do have, God already blessed me with, and that's worth fighting for. I look forward to more people coming to us and saying, hey, what what is it about you that's different? What what more do you have that I don't? What is it about you that's different? You live your life in a different way. And I I hope I get to see Ryan again. I've been trying to get in contact with him, and I've been trying to. This is maybe another trip to Pink House Alchemy, Holly. We may need to go get some more syrups just so we can see Ryan. But I pray today, Lord, cover Ryan. Thank you for Ryan. Thank you for bringing him to church. Thank you for his heart. Thank you for everything that you're doing in his life. But what he didn't realize is he blessed me more than I probably blessed him. And the Lord was reminding me, you're worth fighting for.
Don't, don't get it in your mind that, that the enemy, that the, advers- the, the adversity that you're going through is bigger than I am. Don't let it sink into your spirit that, that the walls are too big that I can't tear them down. Don't get it in your mind that every, every ite that's in your life, whether it's a Canaanite, an Anakite, whatever kind of ite it might be that you've built up in your mind, I'm bigger than them. I can split a Red Sea. I can make water come out of a rock. I can make everything in this earth cry out if you don't worship me, but you're worth fighting for. You are worth fighting for. There's people in my life, and I've told y'all all the types of, of situations and family members that I have that need prayer, but I got one specific name on my mind that I am not going to stop fighting for. They're backslidden. They've removed themselves from the church, and I won't call their name out because it's going to be online, but I will not stop calling out his name because he is worth fighting for. So whoever it is in your life, whatever it is in your life, fight for it. Don't stop fighting. You keep pursuing. You keep moving. You keep pressing toward it, and you keep always keeping your mind that God is with me, and he's fighting for me. Because I'm worth it. I talked to several people this week in my workplace. And if you don't know, I work for Centos and I'm a talker. I like people. And this lady, she said to me, she said, I, I hate my job. Okay. Sorry. Everybody's hiring. You can probably go get a new one. She said, I can't. My parents own this one. Well, number one, please be quiet. Don't let them hear you say that. (laughs) Number two, I'm sorry you're in tears. I'm sorry that you really dislike your job right now. And her mom come around the corner and she just said, she's going through a tough time right now. Her friends are all leaving and this job is the only constant thing that she has. And everything's changing for her. She's a senior in high school. You know how that is. Where do you, 18? I was, yeah, let's go with that. I'm 18. She said she just, she's changed. I, and she just began to divulge all this information to me. And I'm like, I'm at work, but Jesus, be a fence. And she said, she told me the other night that she's just ready to give up. She's ready to call it quits. She said, I'm this close to letting her. And it started in my toes. It made its way up to my spirit. And before I could catch it, it just came out, Brother T. I said, don't you do it. You be her mom. And you tell your husband to be her dad. And you fight for your baby. And in the middle of a restaurant, we had a whole prayer meeting with mom and her baby. Marcus, were you, no, I wasn't scared. Because when when Jesus is saying, I I need you to fight for my children, I fight. Work or no work. Sentos ugly blue uniform or not, the armor of God is always on me. I hot the word in my heart because there are people like that, that they don't know what I do, but they see something different, and I have to be ready at all times. And the same is just for you. It doesn't matter if you can stand behind a pulpit or not. If the Spirit of God is alive inside of you, fight for your coworkers. Intercede for them. That's a good word that we stopped using a long time ago. Where's the intercessors in the room? Where are the people that will, will halt what they're doing and put away all the things that they're going through and will stand in the gap for somebody? People that are struggling, people that are hurting, people that don't, they they forgot the name Jesus. Or maybe they just don't want to even think about the name Jesus. But there's a brother, Chris Savoy, in another grocery store. There's another friend at the school. I know it's getting ready to end, and I know you're getting ready to graduate. But there's going to be people at your college that are going to look at you and say there's something different. But you have to remember that they're worth fighting for. I, I, I want to put it in these kids that, that it, it, it's more than just school. That's a mission field. 
we have to understand that our jobs are not just jobs. They're mission fields. And as long as I can keep that in my mind and keep that in my spirit, that this is not just something I get paid to do, but this is a place that God has planted my feet, and I'm ten toes down 40 hours a week. I know it's hard when they're aggravating you. It's even harder when they're picking at you. But it's still the soul. And he still went to the whipping post for them. He still went to Golgotha for them. He still took three nails for them. A crown of thorns, embarrassment, pulled beard, spit on, slapped around, pushed around. Oh, that Marcus, that was just for me. No, no, no. Oh, no. That was for anyone. Whether it's 10 years ago, whether it's 100 years down the road, the name of Jesus It's for everyone, and every single person is worth fighting for. This city. Pastor told me that he had a meeting with the mayor. I'm not as cool as pastor. I didn't get to meet the mayor. I got to pray at city council meeting, but I didn't get to meet the mayor. But he can go and have lunch with him. That's fine. I pray for our mayor. Elephant or donkey, don't matter. I pray for our mayor. I pray for our president. Again, elephant or donkey, I pray because they're worth fighting for. If our soldiers can strap up every day, put boots on every day, and march in the name of the United States, and I'm thankful for each and every one of them, and they can look at that flag on their arm, and it doesn't matter if it's a black man or a white man, But they look at us and they say, that country right there, all 50 states, is worth fighting for. I will not, and I love them with everything in me. Our first responders, our army, I will not let them get ahead of me when it's something about the kingdom. And not look at each and every one of you in my city and my country and this world and say they're not worth fighting for. You've wronged me. Let's apologize and let's move on. It's something bigger than us. So-and-so hurt me across the way. Let's fix it. There's more people worth fighting for. I can't get away from, from what I feel right now because God is wanting to fix some things in our lives because some of us have such deep hurt and such deep things that have been rooted into our lives about some things, but he's trying to say we have got to move past the hurt. Got to fix it. We've got to repent because each and every person is worth fighting for. Every person is worth fighting for. Can we stand together tonight? Lord, we thank you for your word. God, your word is transformative. God, and I ask right now that we will get a deep-rooted sense in our spirit that where you've placed us is not by accident. Lord, and as you prepare the land for us, and the harvest is already ready, but as you continue to, rep- to, to prepare a place for us, let us reap the harvest that you've set up in front of us. Let us go and get every person, Lord, that that you deemed worth fighting for, which that is every soul that is on planet Earth. Let us do our part for your kingdom. Let us move us aside at times, God, and get a hold of something that's bigger than me for your kingdom. Lord, I pray over these great students, Lord, that they would understand that their schools and their, their places that they are going, God, that it's a mission field that you've sent them to, And the Holy Ghost is in them. Let it be alive and well. God, go with these great people today and the rest of this week, Lord, as they go to their workplaces. Let them be beacons of light and hope for those that are around them, Lord Jesus. God, we love you and we thank you for your word and for your truth. 
Thank you for fighting for us. And let us fight for those that are ahead of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We love you.